just had. Okay. Yep. Bonjour, Stéphane. Uh, so this is for a French and African TV channel. I don't know if you have a few French words that you brought back from Paris or no? Nui, nui. <laughs> That's a good start. Oh, I got <laughs> Well, my question is going to be in English, actually. It's about uh, another Bay Area, Bay Area personality that, that you support. You endorsed uh, Kamala Harris at the DNC uh, end of August. What is your thought on the campaign? Uh, how do you feel one month ahead of the election? And what do you expect of tomorrow's vice presidential debate? <laughs> Everything's political for French people. No, you know? uh, it's all good. Uh, obviously, supporting her is a, an honor. Um, a sophisticated leader that I you know, expect and have confidence she can you know, lead our country and, and provide, obviously, hope, inspiration, unity. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of tough conversations that need to be addressed in our country and a, a lot of progress that needs to be made. But a level of decency and humanity at the top from our leadership is a must, and I think she checks that box. I know she has a, uh, a great opportunity with the rest of the campaign leading up until the, the actual election to uh, to dig into her you know politics and the way that she wants to uh, impact our country you know in, in the most powerful office in the world and uh, I know she'll be able to, to kind of do that in a, in a meaningful way that that provides confidence that she has a great plan but at first and foremost it's is she gonna run the entire country and be a leader for everybody I feel like you know she checks that box and You got to start there, and, and uh, that's why I have confidence in her. Oh, uh, Steph, hi. I know how important your, uh, your foundation is, which is based in Oakland. Can you talk about what it means, unfortunately, for the Oakland A's? They just you know, had their last game, and they're the last professional major team to leave the city, and what that means going forward for, for the city. Um, I think overall it's, it's a sad situation because – You know, sports franchises in any city are, uh, to to borrow a, a line from a good friend of mine, it, it's a sense of hope and inspiration for a community. Whenever you start a year, it's like, you know, a galvanizing, a, gal a way to galvanize, uh, you know, again, that hope and that unity and that togetherness and, and, and having something to look forward to and not just what it does for the, you know, Uh, the economics of that that city and and what Oakland has meant to me um, is is to to say the least it's been huge just in the way that you know I came up in the in in this league and being able to play in front of that front f front of that fan base uh, for the, you know those ten years and knowing the history of the A's the the Raiders and the Warriors there. Um, It sucks, but I, to your point, around what me and Aisha are trying to do within Oakland, it's a it's a matter of supporting the community that supported us when I, when we were coming up and making sure that we still plant our flag there and have a, a, a significant presence there. But you know, it, it is unfortunate that there aren't any you know more professional teams that are representing Oakland. Um, You know, specifically just because of how, how much, you know, history there is around, around, you know, sports and that fandom and that sense of pride of being from Oakland. So I don't know how you kind of work around how, how tough it is. But for me and Aisha, obviously, we want to, you know, make sure we continue our work there, especially through the school district and, um, and creating opportunities for the next generation to achieve their full potential. But other than that, you have to admit how, how sad it is for, for everybody. Stefan over here. How you doing, man? Doing great. Good. This is for you like the longest off season you've had in a long time since your very early career. It, what are the physical, mental, emotional, I guess, benefits to having such a long stretch? And how eager are you to get back on the court to play a basketball game in the NBA? It's weird because the timing of it, knowing I had the Olympics this summer, it didn't feel like it. It felt like, you know, you're trying to put the pieces together why, you know, you're done playing in April. Physically, you get a break. Mentally, you know, you're watching playoff basketball, still kind of in that in that grind of assessing where you are, where you need to be to, you know, be one of those teams that are playing into June. And then I took two weeks off, started working out, getting ready for the Olympics. You know, I had a six-week run playing in the Olympics and, 
these last four weeks trying to balance rest and still staying sharp physically and mentally to get ready for a season. So it tested me in a different way. Um, thankfully, I had the Olympics to look forward to, so I didn't have just five months of sitting at home. And I think that'll hopefully allow me to get off to a good start individually. But to your to your question, I'm super excited to be back and to uh, figure out what this team you know needs to do to win and. You know, just the challenge of putting all the pieces together. You know, we got a lot of new faces and a lot of guys trying to take next steps in their careers. And you know, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be fun from day one tomorrow when we <clears throat> when we hit the court and start getting our reps in. Because every every day we say it all the time in training camp. It's it is a way of thinking if you want to be great in this league, but it is true for us more than ever. You know, every day does matter for you know, us to be able to figure this thing out. When Draymond was in here earlier, he said that in some ways the the new additions, the new vets coming in, is somewhat reminiscent of three couple three years ago when Otto and Gary and the Manya came in. Do you see similarities there? And what do you think of the roster as it is right now? Yeah, very similar for sure. That's a good comparison. Guys that have been around the league in different situations and I think fit the style that we try to play, even though we do need to evolve and, and you know, have a different look when it, on offense and defense. We've had two years of kind of some stagnant ball at times, but still enough that, you know, you, you're con we've, we're convinced that we can be a good team, you know. Obviously, injuries aside, you want to have everybody available, but I think peace is fit and, to your point, a good balance of youth and veteran presence that, you know, uh, can hopefully get us off to a good start. And the good news is, is, like, I'm coming into this training camp with an open mind of, you know, how we're supposed to play. I know there's a warrior mentality of and culture of how we do things. There's a system that we ran for – you know, a decade plus that has worked doesn't necessarily mean that's how this team needs to play. We have to have, a, you know, kind of antennas up on and an openness to, you know, accept what this team's strengths are, what our weaknesses are, and and kind of lean into those. And that's including our youth because we need them to, to play at an extremely high level for us to to be uh, to be the team we want to be. I see. Steph, Steph. Um, you were part of the conversation this summer trying to get kind of a, a bigger name in here. Paul George, obviously, one, one of those. It, it didn't happen. Um, are, how comfortable are you where this franchise is at, where, where this team is at in the bigger picture with, with championship in mind, you know, you know, pretty urgently? Yeah, I mean, if you're not the team that's holding the title at the end of the year, and even I'm sure they were thinking about it, Boston was like you always are trying to get better and you've been around this league long enough from day to day week to week month to month season to season what that actually means for your team can change pretty quickly so you know you go into free agency you know PG's deciding whether he wants to opt in or not okay you know we definitely should take that meeting and I was a part of that process uh the Laurie stuff like the whole league's wondering what's going to happen there and, you know, where how real trade talks are. And I don't ever get caught up in that and the, the noise around it. When something's material, usually I know about it and we have conversations. I'm not the ultimate decision maker, but you give your input. That's how the whole process goes. And even our free agent signings this year, all three guys that we brought in, uh, all our veterans, buddy, you know, uh, Kyle and, and Melt, like, established veterans who know how to play the game and are good, you know, pieces that you need to be a, a you know, a championship type team. Does that mean we're there? I don't know. Um, you ask all 30 teams last season, do you have championship, you know, aspirations? You probably take eight of them serious, 12 of them, you're like, ah, maybe. And only one gets to say, yeah, we, we had championship aspirations. So, I think we're in that position where we can be a relevant team early and give ourselves a chance to, to compete and then assess where we are because that's what every team has to go through. We just have the the shadow of, to your point, like the expectations that we're supposed to be in that, in that conversation. I want to win, and I know everybody in that locker room wants to do their part to help make it happen. So that's how we're approaching the season. 
Hi, Steph. Uh, what, what will it mean to honor Al Adels this season? And just, you know, going back to your early days in Oakland, he was a face at most games. And uh, just to give your heart and soul to an organization for more than 60 years, can, can you imagine that and just sort of his legacy now? Yeah, it's special you know, to have the, the patch and, you know, his name's on our, our court down in the facility. And to your point, he's such an ambassador for the entire Bay Area, you know, the ultimate, you know, Golden State Warrior. You see his face on the uh, the wall in our practice facility. You see his name on the court. You see his number and his name on in the rafters. And, you know, we know the story extremely well of what he meant on and off the court to the organization. So I don't know if any gesture will go you know, far enough to, to honor him and what he meant, uh, you know, to the entire Bay. But uh, every conversation I had with him, he was, you know, very appreciative of, you know, his place within the organization and what he stood for, what he meant. And, and uh, you know, I hope to be in that you know position where you're a part of a community like that for as long as, as he was because uh, it's special and it's very unique and it's uh, it's legendary, you know, the impact that he left. So this is, a, you know, a very simple but amazing gesture and hopefully uh, it goes, you know, broader than that for sure all year long. Stefan, good to see you. Um, I guess following up on that, I mean, being in the same place for a long time, we haven't spoken to you since your contract extension. I mean, how important was that for you to get that done? And as you've talked so much about, it feels like over the past couple of months, just maintaining the maintaining you staying here in San Francisco. Yeah, no secret. That's always been a, it always has been. It still is a goal of mine to, uh, to be a warrior for life, to stay in competitive throughout that process. And uh, I know it's, it's, kind of unheard of, you know, the guys, the short list of guys that have been in that position. Honestly, the ability to kind of just let that be known with the decision to extend and not let that be a distraction or be a, a talking point all year long, no matter what really, you know, happens throughout this season, throughout next season, you know, the third year after that, all of my um, – energy is is spent on preparing myself to play at a very high level to you know do my part as a you know, part of this team to win and everything else will reveal itself as time goes on that's that's kind of the way I want to approach it and you know I'm very confident in the fact that you know being here and being a, a relevant winning team is possible and until I'm proven otherwise that's that's the way I'm I'm moving forward and and you mentioned being open to changes on style and things like that. And Draymond was in here talking about how for so many years it was always the same thing heading into the year. And this year it's not, and it can actually be a good thing. Is there something about heading into a new chapter of this organization, of this team, without Clay, but opening other possibilities and saying we actually do have to change something and it almost feels like it's there's an obvious opportunity to do so? Yeah, I think <laughs> – you get smacked in the face and you don't make the playoffs. That's all the real, you know, message you need or reminder you need that, again, we have a way of doing things in terms of how we approach, you know, practices, games, uh, the level of competition you need to have. But when it comes down to, you know, your X's and O's and the style and all that type of stuff, being open to, you know, evolving and pivoting and figuring out what, especially how the league continues to evolve as well, like, we're the hunters amongst many other teams. And what can this team do to maximize every skill set that we have in that locker room? That's that's the challenge for us. You know, new some new faces on the coaching staff. Like you said, first time me, Clay, and Draymond haven't been together as teammates. You Whatever narrative you want to kind of key in on, it's, you know, for us to, to win, you got to think things differently. Uh, doesn't mean – you know, you're not going to have see you know some consistencies with how we've played before, but um, featuring some of the young guys and, and sets that you know puts them in a position to be successful. You know the different rotations that'll get us in position to compete with the best teams in the league. Like we have to be able to figure that out and got to do it quickly. Two more 
for your first quick, quick one, Steph, over here. What did you think of Kerr doing the night night at the DNC? <laughs> I've seen it. Uh, I've seen it at the DNC. I've seen it at the uh, the President's Cup in golf. I've seen it all over. The Messi did it. Um, I think Steve takes the cake on knowing, and that was a good time to pull it at the great end of a great speech, and you know, getting some good energy in the building. See Wu Kim, shout out to you. I appreciate him doing it, even though I told him he's got to remind himself about time and score. Uh, <laughs> And knowing when you pull a night out, you you, you got to win. Um, but yes, yeah, it's, it's it's fun to know, like especially like you said with Steve at the DNC, is representing America and coming off the the Olympics. It was uh, and him being there, obviously, as our coach, he got he got free pass to do it for sure. And I'll just say Draymond <laughs> mentioned that what struck him watching the Olympics, you at the Olympics, was how the other players on the team were reacting to it for the first time. I know it's you, so maybe you can't quite speak exactly about it but what is it like when you have just that last shot against France you have LeBron and KD over on the other side and I think they're open but you're taking you that think shot. they were open yeah. they were 100 percent open uh, what what is going um, through your mind when you're taking that shot you have what you have you know Batum and the other guy all over you and knowing that KD and LeBron are just fine with you taking that shot I wouldn't even, I wouldn't say that either because uh <laughs> I, I read body language pretty well. When I watched it back, um, I got trapped. I threw it to K. Braun was open on the wing, on the swing, swing, but K threw it back to me. So when he did that, that's when your muscle memory takes over. Uh, I'm already in motion and do my move or whatever. I see the two guys, but I'm already in rhythm. As long as I get it off, I feel like I'm going to make it. But I see both of them as soon as I'm shooting their hands up, and they both went like this, like <laughs> – they didn't expect me to shoot it. I'm sure they uh, were ready for a pass back to the weak side. But uh, as soon as it went in, seeing Bron do the do the gesture, seeing the guys on the bench, you know, K threw his head back, and it was kind of an amazement. Like that was the beauty of that team too, because the energy that we showed um, and the emotion that we showed in the Serbia game on the comeback and down the stretch in the Olympics, like it mattered to everybody to get that done, and everybody knew. Um, the sense of urgency of the moment, and it was it was uh, a memory for a lifetime for sure. So it, it's nice the way it finished for me personally, but we don't get there without all twelve guys on that team, and it was definitely something I remember for forever. Stephen, obviously, Buddy and and Clay as offensive players kind of have similar profiles: shoot threes, move around a lot. But obviously, you don't have the history you have with you had with Clay. What's it going to take, do you think, to, to get you and Buddy in sync, whether he's coming off the bench or whatever, because obviously they want to be able to play both you guys at the same time. So, I mean, we'll figure that out. It's, uh, it's on the list of many things to, to kind of work through when it comes to, again, the openness of how we're going to play, what's being asked of everybody individually, you know, with their role. Uh, the different rotations that will probably will experiment in, in training camp, preseason games, and, and maybe early into the year. But for Buddy, just he shoots the ball. Like, you shoot open shots, you play within the system, you know, it'd be a threat to, to score. You know, whenever he's out there, that will solve itself. You know, obviously we need a defensive mindset as well when it comes to the all five guys, no matter who you're out there with. But – Play with a couple pickup sessions with him. Dude's a shooter. He's confident in his game, and we need that because that's such a valued com uh, commodity in the league. Having a knockdown shooter that can space the floor and somebody that you always got to you know know where he is. So uh, I'm not too worried about that. But it's on the list of all the things we have to figure out as a team to to put it all together. <laughs> 